So this morning we are continuing our study of the fruit of the Spirit from Galatians chapter 5, 22 and 23. Firstly though, I'd like to read familiar words to you from Matthew chapter 18, verse 21, and then one verse from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 14. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him ten thousand bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children, and all that he had, be sold to repay the debt. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, cancelled the debt, and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and went and told their master everything that had happened. And now reading in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 14 from the Good News Translation. We urge you, our friends, to warn the idle, encourage the timid, help the weak, be patient with everyone. See that no one pays back wrong for wrong, but at all times make it your aim to do good to one another and to all people. Paul is finishing this letter to the Thessalonians here with a rapid burst of Christian principles. And if we are to maintain harmony and peace amongst God's people, we need to be those who are practicing patience. Now I have to confess at this point that I need to practice it quite a lot because sometimes I'm not very good at it. The Greek word used here is very important in the New Testament. However, in the Greek translation of the Old Testament, it is used frequently to describe the character of God. It means to be long-suffering. It indicates that need not to give way to a short or quick temper with those who fail. And of course, in dealing with the idle, the timid and the weak, we have every opportunity to fail in the patience stakes. Paul, with his logical lawyer's mind, says, if we're going to encourage people who are timid, if we're going to warn people who are idle, if we're going to help people who are weak, then we are going to need a great big dose of Christian patience. Notice two things concerning this patience. Firstly, the patience to which he refers is a divine attribute. It is one of the dimensions of the character of God. It's what God is like. We're told in Exodus 34 and verse 5, the Lord came down in the cloud and stood there with his servant and proclaimed his name, the Lord. And he passed in front of Moses proclaiming, the Lord, the Lord. 
the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. The whole of the Old Testament is full of such emphasis. David, summarising the same truth in Psalm 103 and in verse 8, speaks of God in this way. And he says, The Lord is compassionate and slow to anger. He is abounding in love. Paul teaches that it is the immensity of God's patience and grace and love which made Calvary a possibility. The longer that he walked with God and the closer that he grew to Christ, the more he became aware of the sinfulness of his own heart. And so he says, But for that very reason, in other words, because I was the very worst, I was shown mercy, so that in me, the chief of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his unlimited patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. God looked at Paul and determined that he would show the wonder of his patience towards him so that to others who regard themselves as the most unlikely of converts, as the most lost in their predicament, as the most buried in sin, as the most trapped in habitual behaviour, and as the most uninterested parties to the things of Christ, that in looking at the Apostle Paul we might say, if the patience of God extends to this man, then perhaps God's patience might extend to me. And then his very kindness would lead that individual to repentance. The second thing to notice about this patience is the fact that it is also a Christian virtue. In other words, and I'm sorry Philip and Stuart and Fiona, we are supposed to look like our Father. If you claim to be the children of your Heavenly Father, you're supposed to look like Him. One of the fruits of that likeness is Christian patience. It's part of the fruit of the Spirit. In Galatians 5.22 we read, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, patience, self-control, etc. It's also an evidence of Christian love. Notice by the way that we don't get to choose from a menu of fruits. We can't leave some out. The fruit singular is all of the characteristics. How challenging is that? It's not something that we try to do. This is something which God, by his Spirit, produces within our lives. Paul prayed it for the Colossians, and we read in Colossians chapter 1 verse 11, where he says, I pray that you might be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience. Who among us doesn't need that prayer in our life? But there are plenty of places that have been set up in our society just to test your patience. If you have ever had the occasion to have to phone HMRC, that would test the patience of many. drive through restaurants, there's a patience tester. How do you always manage to get in the queue with a guy at the front who looks like he just wants a coffee and then he buys something for an entire bus party? How hard is it just to pour a coffee? And nowadays, we're even queuing to get into any shop. It would test the patience of a saint. What about green traffic lights? Aren't you supposed to go when it turns green? I mean, what's the great mystery in this? I'm sure that we've all been sat there and everybody understands when it goes green, you go. Everybody, that is, except the guy 
at the front. Now, in those kinds of circumstances, and they are real circumstances, people aren't going to be impressed by our theological grasp, but they might be blessed by our expressions of practical godliness. And there is no more practical expression of godliness than genuine biblical patience. And so returning in conclusion to Matthew chapter 18 and the man who has been forgiven millions choking the life out of the fellow who owes him a few pounds. Why? Because he has never understood the immensity of the debt that he owes here. Every time that our impatience reveals itself in the lives of others, what we are saying is that our time is more important than theirs, that our interests are more significant than theirs, that our concerns have more preeminence than theirs, and that when we hold an unforgiving spirit towards them, we are declaring that we haven't understood in the slightest degree the immensity of the debt that we owe for God's forgiveness in our own life. So, the fruit of the Spirit is patience. The practice of patience is essential for living in peace. Pray with me just now. Depth of mercy, can there be mercy still reserved for me? Can my God his wrath forbear, me the chief of sinners spare? Lord, we thank you that once on a day you showed your wounds and spread your hands, that you are love and that you love each of us with a divine patience. Continue to grow us in your spirit to be more like you in our conduct and in our attitude. And now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.